Hola, my name is Patricia Morales and I am the program manager for Manuyola. The following video includes final presentations from the 2022 Traveling Hispanic Outreach Ambassador selected by Manuyola for summer internships. This is our fifth year in working in partnership with several state natural resources conservation offices in the Southeast region of the United States, supporting and increasing diversity of the agency's future workforce. The 2022 traveling ambassadors worked and trained for six weeks in Kentucky, Louisiana, Virginia, and Tennessee. We're proud of the students' commitment and dedication to learn from conservationists at local offices. Our team appreciates the state's leadership and NRCF staff's education, training, and cultural investments with these interns. The students develop a better understanding of conservation practices and methods, and the agency benefits from a new pool of talented bilingual recruits. Gracias, and we look forward to continuing collaborations. The I think the two of us were the first ones to go. I was the first one. So I have a little agenda here. I'm going over my introduction, over our experience, my top three activities and projects, because there were a lot. So I chose the, the most important to me, the past times I did and my conclusion. And if you guys got some questions and answers, I'll be willing and able to answer them. So like I said, my name is Francisco Sima de Villa. I go, I'm a rising junior. I attend the University of Puerto Rico at Mayagüez. I major in soil science. So my internship location was at NRCS Alexandria Field Office next to the state field off to, to the state. So that was pretty good. That was good. I could meet some people from the state. So my internship duration was six weeks and I was working mo most likely as a soil conservation trainee. So my overall experience for me was a very enriching and learning experience. Everything I did well, I had some knowledge, but basically all of the practices I impl implemented were new. So I learned the basic soil surveying and soil classification. Soil classification I knew since I'm a soil major in soil science, but but basic soil surveying was new to me. But I got a great I got a great mentor, and I worked besides him, and I really learned a lot. I'm very grateful for all the mentorship that I had. I had the chance to work with the state and the research soil scientists. When I say the state is like the specialist, but he works for NRCS as well. And the university and opportunity to visit cities. I went like Lafayette and New Orleans. I arrived to New Orleans and then drove up to Alexandria and Lafayette. I went for a weekend and watched Top Gun over there, which was good. And I was exposed to activities that are not common in Puerto Rico but in Louisiana are very common. So the conservation practices I did were irrigation land leveling, irrigation pipeline, livestock pipeline, heavy use area. We did some water and facilities, sour, shallow water development, structures for water control, wetland habit, wetland, wetland wildlife habit management, and NRI, which is it's not a conservation practice, but it's done by the NRCS. So it's the National Research Inventory. I'll get it more in detail once I reach there. So I'm gonna show you some pictures and at the same time explain the, the top three most important projects that I did, which the first one is on the Robertson's farm, which we did a, this is the variable slope design for that farm that was, and Catahoula Parish. When I say parish, I mean it's the same as a county, but in Louisiana they say parish. So this is the variable slope design for the rubber surf for the Robertson's farm, which they needed like a land leveling for irrigation. So this is the 3D view of the survey. As you could see, there's a lot of change. The irrigation wasn't well, if they did irrigation as the land was before the land leveling it wouldn't be efficient water will be wasted so that's a 
a valuable natural resource. So that's when we come in. We 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 don't do it. There are some contracts that the contractors do the land leveling, but the, the survey comes from us. So right here is the cut and fill design for the land leveling. I don't know if you can see, but they're tiny numbers, but at, at least you could see the colors. The blue colors means that there's need dirt needs to be applied there to be leveled and the red ones means cut. So we got to take out dirt and level the land for it to be efficient and able to uh, irrig irrigate. So this is the checkout survey at in the three, 3D point of view. So this is after the land leveling done by the contractor, which was the field was separated into three waters, watering zones. And <clears throat> so there's there will be like a ditch, two ditches to collect the water, and the it will there will be a pump and the water will move by by gravity. This what this does is the inefficiency of watering there only the crops got a 30% of 30% water which brought the crops to a hydric stress but now with the land leveling we could reach 100% for the water level so this is good because now the farm will be more sustainable there will always be water for the crops and or the field and that's what basically this project was. So this is over 2000 points were surveyed. This survey, we did it using the satellite. We didn't use this, the, the laser. So it was easy, easier. We just got the rover and hook it up to the truck and we got all the points. So this is where the, the Robertson, this is the forever for Robertson's farm, which was the project that I worked in alongside James Marion. And this is, was, this is what was leveled. This is the equipment the contractors used to cut and fill with our cut and fill design. So this is another practice that I did. The Keystone Pipeline, this is in Grant Parish. I don't have a picture of the actual irrigation pipeline, but the blue line is the new pipeline, which was connected to an existing pipeline, which also was done by NRCS. So what I did here was basically, I had the book, I got the rod readings, elevation, probe depth to check out if the, pipe, if the pipeline was sitting three feet below the dirt. So when I was checking if this would meet the NRCS standards, which it did, so this is the drawing that I did to check out even me. As you can see, the pipeline doesn't have any like ups and downs with, so there was no need to add an air vent or anything. So we could just check it out and it, it was good. So now I'll talk to you about a little bit about the National Research Inventory, also known as NRI. So this is, surveys that are done at land, private landowners like farms or, or properties to check out the trends of the land. So they check water, the land, the vegetation and the soils. So I worked with the soil crew on, on this survey, but there was also people checking the grazing land. So I had, since I'm at soil, I'm majoring in soils, they let me work with them. So this is the pit that we did to check out the soil texture, the horizons, and to see if it meets, if it's the same as the soil map that they did, which it was, this is buoy, the series buoy. This is an argillic order. As you can see, there's all the clay are at the 12 to 20, 20 inches. So that means it's alluviated from the top of from the top horizons. This is oh, sorry. This is me working with the soil crew. I had the chance to meet Rachel Evans from Ruston. So basically I mostly work with soil texture. 
and that was my top three projects. So on the past time, what we, I, my favorite were running crawfish traps. We did a crawfish bowl, fishing. We did a fish fry and frog hunting. Unfortunately, frog hunting, there were no frogs. We went to a rice field to catch them, but there were too small, too many gators, small gators, which they eat the crawfish and water moccasins, which they also eat the frog. Sorry, I said crawfish, but they also eat the frog. So this is me and Adrian running the traps. This is, we catch the crawfish, those crawfish run away. They got up out of the bag and start crawling all over the patio. And on the cooler, there's the crawfish that we were going to eat. We went bass fishing. This In this occasion, we got hooked up at the same time and we brought the fish in. So it was my first time bass fishing. I had a lot of fun. Adrian had a lot of fun as well. And in conclusion, this internship was great, a great learning experience more than I expected. I enjoy learning, meeting new people. I would recommend this internship to anybody who's interested in natural resource conservation because I work with soils, but there are people that work with water, biologists involved, agronomists. So there's, this is very open to, to everybody who's interested in conserving a resource. You, Whichever research you like, I, there's probably a, a job opportunity for you here. So I really recommend this to anybody. I would like to thank to thank Sean Taylor, James Marion, which was the soil the soil conservationist, and the James Marion was the soil technician that worked in the office I was. They were great mentors. I would like to thank the state soil scientist for bringing me to some activities that he had. Brandon Waltman and Gavin, which are the, and Rachel Stout Evans that are research soil scientists. They were a lot of help to me. And last but not least, Chad Kaiser, then for giving me this opportunity. I am looking forward to going back to Alexandria, NRCS to the Alexandria field office next year. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all good. My name is Joan Graniela, and I will be talking about my experience as a Mano Iola intern working with the Natural Resource Conservation Service. I would like to start with who I am. <laughs> and I am a rising college freshman. And yes, you heard correctly. <laughs> I'm different from the other incredible interns. I haven't started college yet. But I will be starting next week a bachelor's in industrial engineering, and I plan to do all my extracurriculars and extra courses in environmental engineering and conservation. I am also from the west side of Puerto Rico, from a place called Cabo Rojo. And now let's get started. And this summer, I was in the state of Louisiana. I had never been to Louisiana before, but I got the opportunity to be there for six weeks from June 13 to July 22, working be beside great professionals in the field of Alexan and the office in Alexandria of the NRCS. My overall experience was great. The Manoyola internship was not only my first work experience, but it was also the first professional opportunity I got to dive in into my passions because I had already done other great internships and activities related to this field, but never went so exact into what I want to pursue that let me get that hands-on experience. It taught me how to create change by helping the community and the planet at the same time. And it gave me a new perspective on how as an engineering, as an engineer, I can make realistic and helpful solutions for this process. But if I had to describe my whole experience in one word, it will be in fact impactful. And I will show you why. Um, here, I wanted to share 
three of the highlights of my work during this time. The first one is that I learned about the work of NRCS and USDA, its importance, short term and long term, and the science behind it work. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't know too much about the agency, but it was refreshing when I started to learn about their service, their impact, and overall being part of it and their work. Another big part was doing surveys and getting to meet with landowners and the community that really benefits from the service NRCS gives. And I think from the surveys, it was the part where I learned the most. Um, I did similar work to what Francisco just explained, and I participated in several types of surveys used for ordinary on-farm activities that can be for livestock, croplands, forestry, and wildlife. And these surveys are divided depending on the stage of the projects in primarily design and construction check or layout. In addition to that, I also learned about the different tools and equipment used. The photos we see over here are photos I took in the field. One was in the primary survey and another in a cropland survey and another in the soil survey. Um, oh, and I can't forget about my third highlight because I got to explore different conservation practices and even participated in a soil survey and the NRI that Francisco talked about. That were very enriching moments where I learned a bit of everything, just like when we went to the Kisachi NF Long Leaf Pine Flatwood Savannah restoration site. That was great. It was a collaboration between NRCS Louisiana, NRCS Texas, and Fish and Wildlife of Louisiana. We mostly discussed the project and the futures for restoration, this restoration, the site, and tested the soil in different areas and identified wetland characteristics. Observing that and being part of that process was really impactful, and I just loved it. And then we're so going to the next um, slide. And it's another impact for me was that I ended up doing my own, own little NRCS guide, intern guide. This just how um, started as me trying to organize the information I was learning and then realizing it could be helpful for other interns. Um, I commented my idea in the office and everyone was really helpful and supportive. And even I even learned new things that I couldn't learn if I wasn't doing that. And that was amazing. And in the intern guide, you can find the introduction to the NRCS, the surveys they offer, um, divide it and explain the equipment you frequently use and how to understand or do field notes. Um, an explication of the science behind of war, our work, some basic information about Louisiana, the flora or fauna, and what you could encounter, because I didn't know I could encounter sugars or um, armadillos and all that, so that was pretty cool. Some recommended links that helped me at the beginning of my adventure, and some a little space for advice for new interns. I'm going to show you here on a few pages. This, guy's ha this guide has 17 pages, but I wanted to show you a few just for an example. But yeah, if someone wants to see it in detail, I'm happy to share it. And that was like cool to me because it's something I could leave in the office and impact in some way. And next, I am almost done, but I just wanted to highlight the other three big things I experienced in this travel internship. The first one was teamwork. The, and when I say teamwork, it's not just the teamwork between me, um, Francisco and Adrian. We also did teamwork collaborations between other interns that were in other offices, other offices, even on um, Texas, and other agency, like it was like fish and wildlife. That was super cool. It was always an adventure because 
as I told you before, I didn't knew what was like Louisiana and I had never been there, but exploring a completely new environment and culture was amazing. I even got the delight of learning about sugars and the ex and even experienced their bite personally. That was super cool. But it all ended up in growth, not only professionally, also um, personally. I think that's a big part of what this intern was this internship was for me. Uh, then my one word keeps being impactful because I know it changed my life and it will have positive consequences in my future. As a college freshman, I never imagined that there were opportunities like this for me. And having this experience so early on in my professional journey was really impactful. Um, it opened my eyes to the opportunity and options available career-wise. It assured me in an early stage, like right before starting college, that this is what I want to pursue. And it made me more confident in my abilities. It gave me the opportunity to network with professionals and students with the same passions and interests and people that I know will become like my mentors and my friends in the future. Um, to share some extra photos I took in the field and in the office. And yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for believing in me. And to Jamie, to Sean, to Nolo, to everyone, to everyone that made this possible. Uh, I appreciate it so much. So, hello everyone. Uh, you can't see my face, but I put so many pictures. So you're gonna see my face all throughout the presentation. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about my NRCS summer internship experience. Uh, and I would like to thank Manuela for sponsoring this assistantship and this experience with NRCS. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Julian Arturo La Madrid Zamora. My nickname is Popcorn, and that nickname was given to me by my in, uh, supervisor, Adam Darty. Uh, and that nickname means that since I arrived in Tennessee, uh, it didn't rain. So my supervisor says, it's my fault because I'm from Puerto Rico and Puerto Rico is always sunny and it's always hot. It's always hot. So he said, since I arrived, it's been hotter than a popcorn fart. So my nickname was popcorn the whole internship. <laughs> my home city is Guaynabo. I am from the University of Puerto Rico, Maya West campus. And I'm actually going to start pursuing my master's in agricultural economics starting uh, in August. And I have a predict, uh, projected graduation date for December, 2024. I wanna try and do it in two or two and a half years. My duty station was in Tennessee in the field office of Coffee County. And my supervisors uh, was Adam Darty and Alan Wilmore. So a little bit more about the internship. Uh, it was a very hands-on experience. Uh, it was a great experience. And in this next slide, I'm going to be talking more uh, with more pictures and about the experience and what I uh, got to do throughout the internship. So in this first picture, uh, we were working in GIS. Uh, for this picture, I was working with a state biologist, Chase, and we were working on wetland and wildlife management. Uh, we were doing GIS coordinates and mapping an area. As we map the area, uh, we started noticing sinkholes and uh, uh, various holes, which meant that there could be a cave uh, down below, which meant that uh, the process of flooding and creating a wetland and habitat uh, would not be uh, able to do so. And in that first experience, that was in my first week, uh, I came to know about CSP and EQIP. Uh, programs about uh, both of the programs from NRCS. In our case, we were doing an uh, initial equip that would be uh, flooding the area, and then it would be pursued by uh, continuing the CSP program. 
But in that case, that farmer couldn't do the program since he had sinkholes, we couldn't make a, fl a flood for ecosystem and wildlife. Other practices I learned and had the opportunity to work on were cover crops. Uh, in Manchester, Tennessee, 98% uh, of the farmers of Coffee County uh, make uh, cover crop practices, cover crops and no-tills. Uh, such practices uh, regulate the soil temperature, uh, uh, maintain moisture, and uh, it's better for the crops in uh, sunny days and uh, seasons with droughts. In our case, we worked with cover crops, not only on row crops. In Tennessee, we worked with corn, soy. Uh, there was corn fields, there was hay fields, there was wheat fields, but it was mostly worked on um, corn, soy, and wheat. Besides uh, cover crops for row crops, we also work on cover crops for grazing fields. And it's important to uh, let know that cover, the importance of cover crops is promoting biodiversity in the ground. The, the practice is to simulate nature, simulate the mother nature and constantly feed the ground with nutrients. So it was a very interesting practice. It was a very interesting experience. And it was very interesting to make a, to compare between fields that didn't have cover crops and fields that did have cover crops. Since fields who didn't have cover crops, since when I arrived, there was such a big drought, there were 35 days without rain, all their uh, crops started to twist and started to burn up. But other fields which had no-till and cover crop practices, their corn or their soil were completely fine. Uh, other tests or other experiences I had were infiltration tests that were probably just checking the uh, aeration, the spore spaces in the soil. Uh, in our case, uh, cover crops, soils with cover crops have better aeration and better uh, soil uh, practices. We also did fence measuring. Uh, fence measuring was probably the most for cattle and for grazing uh, to divide uh, the fields and not uh, promote uh, erosion. And finally, uh, one of the other practices we worked on was uh, soil surveys. Uh, soil surveys was probably one of the most practices we did besides the measurements and besides the cover crops. Uh, the importance of these practices is to uh, reduce erosion in uh, farm in farmland. So farmland can be affected by near rivers, streams, and wetlands. And in our case, we did soil surveys uh, to evaluate how, what protocols or what processes we should uh, develop so we can reduce the erosion in that area. And that specific practice, we use uh, survey level, it's also called a transit level, which is that tool you see there. Uh, and we also do the measurement tool, which is that big pole, that big pole could be up to 100 feet, but we, we use to depend of, uh, of the height we were measuring. And in that notebook, uh, you can see the measurements we took on a stream from the picture before uh, for a specific uh, eroded area. And, and those measurements are taken and then are given to engineers of NRCS, probably from the same office or from a different office to work on uh, the plan to uh, reduce the erosion in that area. Besides uh, the travel internship, I wanted I, I put in on. Uh, uh, I wanted to say that uh, in this travel internship, I did also a lot of internal traveling, and I also got to see a lot. Uh, not only from Tennessee, which was my first time visiting, I also went to Kentucky, and I also went to New York City. So uh, I had an internal joke with uh, with Jonathan, another of the interns from Manoyola, which he was saying, "Oh, you're the literally the travel intern because you just traveled everywhere and you just wanted to see everything." I was like, "Yeah, I have to enjoy the time, the space." And every weekend I had something planned. And I think uh, at the end of the internship, I got sick, and I I just think it was burnout. 
from just working all the week and then on the weekends just keep on going and, and seeing more things. So there's a picture from Chattanooga. We went from uh, we went to Rock City, we went to Ruby Falls, we went to the Incline. Uh, I got to see Kentucky. We went to several places in Kentucky. I got to see New York City. Uh, it was a really great experience. Besides, uh, I think one of the most important things of the internships was the friends made along the way. It is not only professional friends, uh, in this picture, well, there's Jonathan and there's Damal Morales, which is from the uh, Somerset office in which Jonathan was at, which he was also a student from the University of Puerto Rico. So it was great to make these interactions and these connections and this networking uh, all along during this experience. Uh, here, uh, this was on my last day of my internship. This uh, on my left is Alan Wilmore, and on my right is Adam Darty. Adam Darty and Alan Wilmore are like the gurus of cover crops, of no till. They know so much. They're excellent mentors. They just they're constantly working. They they don't want to be in the office. They just want to be on the field all the time and working with farmers. And it's actually surprising the amount of contracts they make in a year. Usually NRCS offices, from what they told me, would make probably between 15, 25, 30 contracts to be uh, excessive. And in our case, in our office, this past year, they made 60 contracts. So they just, they're always on hand and always out there and they know so much. So I recommend them 100% for other interns and for other people who want to have the experience. In conclusion, uh, what I liked the most was the diverse learning opportunities. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm from agriculture economics. I did take my soil classes, but I wouldn't say it was as hands-on and it was as specific as this internship. And due to this uh, experience, uh, it has given me more knowledge in what I would like to pursue in my master's. My biggest learning experience was that we must re replicate mother nature. Uh, Adam said this uh, so much, and I thought he probably said it every day, and he said it to farmers, to coworkers, to everyone. Uh, it's so important to replicate mother nature and to keep the soil fed because the soil is our resource for generations for food. We need to maintain our resources. So for that, my goal for next year is I'm gonna pursue my grad studies and research related in environmental and agricultural topics. Uh, I've already talked with a professor of the university. I'm gonna be collaborating with the professor, uh, Dr. Hector Tavares. He especially works on environmental economics and uh, uh, ecology economics. So uh, we're gonna be working on PES, Payment for Ecosystem Services, which is we're trying to develop an uh, economic model, which is accessible to both farmers and uh, people who work in ecosystem services industries uh, to uh, put a pricing in the conservation and the rejuvenation of soil and resource practices. Besides that, uh, I'm gonna pursue, I'm not gonna continue grant writing. Uh, I work with other professors and I write proposals for urban agricultural projects and rural agricultural projects. And I wanted to leave uh, my presentation with a quote uh, that was said by uh, my supervisor, uh, Adam Darty, which said, what he said uh, is that you need to know people, you need to get real involved with people to work with them, and you need to let them know we care. Because the reality is agriculture is traditional and farmers is traditional farming. And for generations, many farmers have been doing the same. So we gotta let the farmers know, we know the best practices so they can have the best uh, product out of their fields, out of the soils, and for their families and future generations. 
So that would be all from me. Uh, thank you everyone for the amazing experience, amazing internship, uh, the growing spaces. And uh, yeah, this is, this is my presentation. Um, today, I'm, I'm going to present my experiences as an intern for the Traveling Hispanic Student Outreach Ambassador in the state of Kentucky. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, well, in first place, my name is Jonathan Irizarri Soto. Uh, I am in my second semester for my master's degree with a concentration in agricultural education at the University of Puerto Rico at Maya West. In addition to being an intern at Manoyola, uh, I am a conservation content specialist from Victus Puerto Rico, a nonprofit organization that helps disadvantage farmers in, in the island. Uh, always, I like to start later mentioning what is Manoyola. That's the reason why we are here. But Manoyola is founded in 2009 and is a minority and women-owned consultant for embassies in North Carolina with team members in Mississippi, Puerto Rico, California, Texas, Louisiana, and Netherlands. And the mission is to help each individual professional love what they do. Uh, in first place, I was assigned to the Somerset uh, office in the Pulaski County. And I had the opportunity to work in another four offices. That's a huge advantage where I traveled with a super, a super DC. Uh, the other offices was in Monticello, Albany, Columbia, and Campbellsville. Additionally, I have the opportunity to visit the state office at Lexington. That's the blue one. Uh, starting with my learning experiences, uh, the internship. Uh, I use some uh, conservation resources like the we use to planning uh, the NRCS office technical guide, the Kentucky Interagency coordination tool the National Resource Concert List and Planning Criteria, and the National Planning Procedures Handbook. Also, I have the opportunity to work uh, with the Wildlife Habitat Evaluation using the Crumb Lab Habitat Index Worksheet. Uh, all of this are used in a holistic manner to carry out effective planning, which meets the needs of the clientele, while addressing the resource concern and the impact that the agriculture can cause uh, on the land. Uh, some of the conservation practices that I was working in this six week internship was, for example, the high tunnel system. Uh, these practices is used to improve the plant health and vigor. Also the fan system, this is to control the movement of animal people, including the vehicles, pasture and hay planting. This practice is used to improve and maintain the livestock nutrition and health, provide and increase the forage supply period and low forage production, and reduce the soil erosion and improve water and air quality and the soil health. Other practices is the stream development, uh, this is to improve the quantity or the quality of the water for the livestock and the wildlife. And the forest and improvement is another practice that improve and sustain forest health and productivity, improve wildlife and pollinator habitat and other uh, factors. Uh, I also work in some engineer practices, specifically in the design of a water a waterway. And in my last days, I work in the NRCS FSI compliance uh, in order to maintain the eligibility for the most USDA programs. Uh, producers must comply with the highly erodible land conservation and the wetland conservation provisions. So. Uh, if the producers who are not in compliance are not eligible to receive for uh, the benefits for most of the programs administrated by the FSA and the NRCS. So I have the opportunity to make this uh, in my last days. Also in my office time, I have the, the opportunity to complete some webinars in the Agner platform on topics such as security, human resources, forests, and wetlands. Uh, 
talking about the office and cultural experiences, well, I have some fruit fashion shows at the office, basically all my outfits combined with the snacks of the day. And we have some uh, battle at the office, but at the final we ended in, in a draw. And in my free time, I spend a lot of road trip uh, discovering Kentucky. Here's some pictures from Camp Nelson, the Capitol, the Sanders Cafe, uh, Wolf Creek Dam. Uh, here, Mammoth Cave, the Lincoln Bird Plates, uh, both are national parks. Uh, here in Louisville, the Slugger Museum, Cumberland Falls, Churchill Down, and other places. And also, I visit Julian and see what's going on in Tennessee. Uh, we visit some nice places like the Olson Ford, Ruby Falls, Rock City, and, and other places. And also, I made a little trip to Indiana with Damuel. So we met uh, some places such as the Lincoln Boyhood National Park, Hollywood Work, uh, some main right archway, and Angel Mounts. So in my final point for this six week internship, uh, I really want to, to thank uh, Tunolo, Maya, Patricia, Molly, and all the staff that NRCS offices in Somerset, the other offices, the state offices for open doors to me. Uh, I want to thank to Jeff Orchard for accepting me in his office and trying to teach me so much in this short amount of time. Uh, and the way to making this whole experience so adventurous. Uh, I returned so satisfied uh, to Puerto Rico without sugar bites. And we hope, uh, we're hopeful to come back to Kentucky soon. Um, this internship brings me a new perspective about what is the work of the agency. In my nonprofit organization, I work with the farmers, I connect with the agencies, but not necessarily know who the agencies do for, for the farmers. So this is a new, uh, great perspective for me. Uh, show me uh, maybe a new uh, future plans and goals to, to perhaps. Uh, maybe this photo is a security concern for Maya, but <laughs> if happiness is on the doors and in the other side, it doesn't matter how many fences you must jump, just jump. So thank you so much for everything, for your time. I'm sorry if I extend my time. So thank you so much. That's my presentation for today. My name is Irving Aguilar and I'll be talking about my experience with the Maniola internship with NRCS. So just as a quick introduction of who I am, my full name is Irving Javier Aguilar Laracuente. I uh, live in Sabana Grande. I'm a student from the University of Puerto Rico in Mayagüez, just like every each one of these students. Um, I got my degree in agricultural and environmental systems. And next semester, I'll be working on as a graduate student in the food and science and technology area. So just as a quick heads up of like the field, office information. It was, I was located in Virginia. It was in Louisa. Uh, that was the address, the 39 Industrial Drive, Louisa, Virginia, the United States. In case anyone is close by, you can visit and say hi, tell them I sent them. And if I get in trouble, um, well, it'd be that way sometimes. <laughs> um, here is the field office crew. Um, really amazing people like made the whole thing way better actually like they didn't have to make it as great as they did um just like to introduce each one of them um from left to right the first one we got Corey kirkland he's a district conservationist from fluvanna in avonal county no wait avonal county in nelson county my bad um, then we have Jonathan Lipinski. He is a soil conservationist. He is pretty much someone that constantly helps out Corey Kirkland whenever he needs to. Um, he also helps out with Dana and Ross and I as well. Um, then there's me. The next one would be Sylvia Nelson. She's pretty much the secretary of the office and she does a lot of great work and is constantly up 
on top of everything. So she's a very big help. Then we got Dana Bayless, the one with the Hawaiian shirt. Just that was his special shirt for my last day. <laughs> um, he was my supervisor. He is the district conservationist for the Fluvanna in Louisa County. And then we had Ross at the end. He is the soil conservation technician and he does a lot of the surveys and a lot of the designs in that area. Uh, some of my goals and tasks for this internship was, well, first off, learning about the different practices in Virginia, just because every state is completely different and they all implement different practices or even practices in different manners as well. Um, take as many trainings as possible just to try and get ahead of the curve, especially if in the future I do get an opportunity. I don't have to be backed up with that many trainings help as much as possible because I feel like no matter what I, they need a help in, I just want to be a helping hand no matter what and just get experience in other areas, not only as a soil conservationist. Learn about other positions at NRCS and to make sure to do the best I can at every moment. Some of the skills I learned would be um, how to do a stream visual assessment protocol, how Russell 2 works and its uses, how to do a survey, that being a sole survey or a preliminary survey, that a lot of the preliminary surveys with uh, Ross, especially for one of the projects that we were working on. Um, learn what to do for an, a national resource inventory, uh, wetland determination. This was all with a sort of scientist located in Farmville, which is another one of our counties. Um, that was with Louise Jacks. Becoming better in teamwork because a lot of the work just like couldn't be done by just one person, even though I'd much rather work as a single. It, it was great to just work with others and like get better at in that area. Determination because this whole thing helped me out to get better and actually want to pursue maybe a career in NRCS or just with the USDA in general. And managing stress, especially at my last week where I had too many things on my plate, I just like needed to be able to manage all of it. And honestly, it was just a combination of the guys at the office just making it all better and like actually helping me go through it. Some of the conservation practices that we usually implement would be uh, the fence, the access control, the different types of watering systems, prescribed grazing and pasturing hayland. I'm not gonna go too much into detail with all of them since I don't wanna end up taking like 20 minutes just to explain all of these. <laughs> Here's a couple of pictures. The first three are from the Beaver Creek Watershed Project. This is a water supply and flood preventive dam. Uh, they're gonna try and make it better. I met up with the state engineer, Matt Lyons. He explained the whole thing and like showed me the new designs for it, which is honestly a very big project. Also met up with, um, Austin Hunt, which is the state economist as well. Um, at the bottom right, it's me next to a total station for a survey we're gonna do at the Fred, Fred and Peter Massey family farm. It was to do a stream creek survey to determine the elevation and as well determine the velocity of the creek as well. Did that with Ross which was honestly one of the best part of this whole internship, just being able to do a survey with him. Over here, we have more pictures. All of these are from Overton Mickey, his farm. We were especially trying to see that he was actually going along with the plan that, that he had. Um, got a couple of pictures of the different wildflowers that he's been planting. Uh, top, top left would be a wild bergamot and the bottom right was brown eyes, Susan, if I'm not mistaken. And in the top right, it's a picture of 
Uh, Tiffany Dietrich, which she is the biologist located in Verona and Ross and I, and honestly, it was amazing just to meet up with Tiffany and just seeing her work and like, actually she's a big bird person. So she was able to identify all the birds that were in that area by just listening to them, which was amazing to see her work in, in action. A couple of more pictures. This is um, the, the top, I guess, center is about a winter feeder for the cows. Here, this is where the owners can just open up the gates and the cows would enter, eat there whenever they want and leave whenever they want. They also would like their manure that would stock up in there, they would just like move it towards the, towards the storage that you can see at the bottom picture where they just stored all the manure or other equipment or even other nutrients like corn as well. And then the right end picture, it's a picture of me and Areli Ortiz. She is the area one uh, resource conservationist, uh, which is located in Harrisonburg. It's, it was awesome just to spend the whole day with her and like learn about what she does. And like also since she was Puerto Rican, it was like very nice just to like have that couple of anecdotes uh something that's still it's pretty funny to me it's just Dana Bayless trying to pronounce both of my last names um even though I constantly told him it's not really necessary he still was like he still wanted to pronounce it and um he would constantly like say especially La Cuenta he never actually said it correctly up until like before I left he would just say La Frente and would just make me laugh. And I was like, he was like, did I say something bad? I'm like, no, you just said forehead, the forehead. And we just ended up laughing at that. Uh, but yeah, before I left, he was able to say it correctly, which I was very proud of him, considering he has a very strong Tennessee accent. Like, uh, that was really great, honestly. Uh, meeting up with a childhood friend, uh, Quite literally in the first week, I think second day, I went to a herbicide field day. And uh, out of nowhere, a person that I saw kind of familiar, like he, he has changed a lot, but like he still seemed very familiar in his car. And like when he got closer to me, I was like, oh my God, it's him. Um, so Elwood Rivera, wait, Elwood Vega Rivera, he is the soil conservationist from the Amelia County and like he used to be my neighbor my neighbor back back like I haven't seen him for like I think four to three years around that time so it was really really great to just see him again after all this time and like I said seeing how good Tiffany is I, I identify birds like she got a, a list of like 20 different kinds of birds just by listening for the different sounds and all that. Um, and also this picture was just of a tiny horse. I just found it funny. And it was from one of the farms that where we did a survey again with Ross. Um, and yeah, just thought it, it'd be slowly uh, and cute as well. So how did the internship help me for the future? It helped me explore a different career path, especially in agriculture. I've only done pretty much like farm work. so like just being able to see this other side of, of a career in this area was really nice. It motivated me to apply for another opportunity to work with NRCS in the future. Hopefully I get that opportunity. <laughs> uh, my confidence got better. At the start, I rarely talked. I didn't want to even say a thing just because I was afraid of saying something bad or offending anyone. And right at the end, I was like, constantly talking with the guys, like we were just, it, it was great. I uh, was able to make great connections, not only field office wise, as well as area office and state office. Like there's too many people I've met and probably, hopefully I don't forget when I'm like thanking them because there were a ton of people that I was able to interact with. 
And yeah, overall experience, it was amazing. Just like a summary of it, it was just great. The guys at the field office made everything worth it. They were able to always help me out on everything, um, actually got me to always be able to do something even with the few limitations that being like computer access or like um, maybe we didn't know if I had driving permissions or anything like that. Like we, they still made the best out of it. And like, honestly, I can't thank them for that. I can't thank them enough for that because it, they really made it a blast, the, even though it was just a short six weeks with them. Um, like I said, got to meet a ton of great people that work other field offices, area offices, and state office as well. Was able to get some hands-on experience, uh, had a couple of trainings done. And yeah, thank you all for your attention, especially thank you to the Maniola team for giving me this opportunity. Really thankful for them, like, just being able to sponsor this whole thing. Uh, the guys at the field office, like I said, I saw, I saw in the call, Dana Bayless, Ross Norton. So like, it's great to see them here be present. Uh, obviously, Corey Kirkland, Jonathan Lipinski, Sylvia Nelson as well. People like um, Arelis at the Area 1 office, at the state office, a huge thanks to Edwin Martinez. Jackie Alexander, Kat, Kathleen Anderson, I hope I did not butcher her name, Patrick Smith, Chris Bradshaw, Chad Wentz, Barry Harris, probably I left someone out in all of this, but like I can't say it enough. Thank you everyone for this opportunity.